All right, well, welcome everybody to the One New Course Radio Podcast, where we're your number one source for the kinds of business and entertainment. So we're here. It's season two. You, you rode with us for about um, for twelve episodes and an NCAA tournament, which is amazing. Um, but now we're here. We told you what we're going to bring you. We're going to bring you better quality, better guests, better content. And most importantly, we're going to be here uh, a lot more than you thought we would be. Uh, so if you, you thought we were going to be here for another 12 episodes, you may see us for more. Uh, but we're definitely going to be here to give you what we said we would, which is business entertainment in its purest form. So um, today, for season two, episode one, uh, we're going to be um, kicking off uh, one of our segments uh, one of one of the four, uh, at this point it's four, maybe more later, maybe less, who knows. We're here. We're doing our thing. Uh, but, but more importantly, the segment is called Diary of an Entrepreneur. I'm, I'm going to be introducing our guests in a moment, but before we do that, we got to pay our bills. And uh, the sponsor of our show is uh, PS Management, which when it comes to business management, there are a lot of different components that you might not have accounted for it. You might have a skill uh, as a plumber, as a business professional, or just as a brand as a, in total. Uh, but when you signed up for that to, to make money with your brand, you didn't think about bookkeeping. You didn't think about accounting. You didn't think about business planning. You didn't think about your sales process. There's a lot of things you didn't think about um, when it comes to what you're doing as an entrepreneur, as a professional. But make no mistake, those are things you need to think about. <laughs> but but uh, as opposed to trying to do it yourself, uh, why don't you give PS Management a call, uh, which you have the opportunity to have uh, a firm that's going to represent you, um, not only f- you know for all of the different things that you know about, but the things you may not know about. So when you think about business planning, business development, call PS Management. Uh, where you can find them Facebook everybody's on Facebook so just go to Facebook and find them at um, facebook.com forward slash one problem solved once again that's forward um, facebook.com forward slash one problem solved and you'll be able to find PS management where they'll be able to help you with all your business development needs so now that we paid our bills I am uh, going to introduce my co-host for those that don't know uh, I it's not just me uh, I am Mitchell Backus, who is the uh, consult, um, the CEO, owner, and lead consultant of PS Management. Uh, but more importantly, I have uh, the person that has made this all possible, who's created the platform, who has been here uh, also for the 12 episodes and in, in, in the NCAA tournament that you're part of in season one. And as uh, my favorite light skinned brother, uh, Dennis Buchanan, CEO of One Record. How are you doing today, sir? <coughs> <coughs> Microphone check, one, two, one, two. No, um, I'm doing good, man. It's uh, it's a blessing to be here with you shooting uh, season two, episode one. I've been really, really well. I am super excited about what we have in store for everybody today and also them finding out who the guest is. So um, bringing out or rolling out diary of an entrepreneur right now is, is it's a, it's a beautiful thing because the premise behind this theme for the show of the one recourse podcast diary of an entrepreneur, it's talking about the progression that entrepreneurs go through. That's not often seen, but the story is, is told at a later time. So the premise of this show is to really speak with the entrepreneurs know where they're at, what they got doing, what they got going on, and at a later date, bringing them back on the show and really seeing their progression. And in order to do that, the best way to do that, you got to get to know who that entrepreneur is. And without further ado, I definitely want to introduce our guest. He can introduce himself because he can't. nobody can do it better than he can. You might be surprised who this guest is. But I'm going to pass the mic over to our guest and uh, let him take over for now. And then I'm going to put him in the hot seat. That's some real questions. Uh, so, so um, 
we we got an incredible guest. I'm pretty excited to meet this uh, this gentleman. Uh, you know, he, he he started a consulting company um, about ten years ago. Um, almost ten almost ten years. It'll be t- uh, ten years. I would say within uh, 2018. I mean August. I started a, a, a networking group which uh, has basically ran, ran now since 2010 uh, called the Community Access Network, which puts uh, business owners in, in position to promote and develop their business ideas and concepts. So now you just heard a prequel of who the guest is. So I'm going to tell you who the guest is. I wasn't done yet. I know. <laughs> In addition to that, he likes long walks on the beach. <laughs> he, he, like, he likes smoothies. He likes to play ball when his knee is not jacked up. <laughs> so I want to introduce you our guest. Hold on, where is he at? It's me, ladies and gentlemen, it's me. I'm your guest for this week, the Diary of an Entrepreneur. And not only that, it's my first time on the One Big Course Radio podcast as a guest, so I'm officially in the hot seat. And I'm going to turn it over to Dennis Buchanan, where he's going to put Mitchell Backus, CEO of PS Management, on the hot seat to talk about his business and everything that's going on. So I'm the first of the Diary of an Entrepreneur. So go ahead, Dennis. Put me on the hot seat. Let's get it on. <clears throat> all right, all right. So we're about to put Mr. Mitchell Backus on the hot seat right now. So... Mr. Mitchell Backus. Yes, sir. I mean, now I know you got credentials. I mean, that that's why I'm glad that we work together. Right. But our listeners don't know that. All they know is they just see, you know, see this chocolate brother next to me on camera. I'm more, I'm and, more and, of a caramel. Car- caramel? It's caramel. Uh, okay, it's so chocolate. it's not chocolate. But they, they just kind of see you um, on camera. They listen to your voice. They don't really know much about you. So. Right. Since this is Diary of the Entrepreneur and everybody has a story to tell okay. in their progression, why don't we start with day one? How did how did Mr. Mitchell Backus even get into this whole business entrepreneurial thing? Woo! All right, well, well, day one started in, I was going to say... You got fired? Not just playing. <laughs> nah, oh, actually I did. Oh, that's how the story that happens was, sometimes. That wasn't day one, it was more day zero. Okay, go ahead, man. So, let us know. You know, as an entrepreneur, and I, I know we can all say this, we have days where we have our defining moments. So I had two defining moments that kind of was, I'll call it the prelude, right? Okay. So the way the prelude started was uh, I was a, a high school senior, right? And I worked for, I was, I worked at Boston Market. So for all of our, um, uh, listeners here who work at Boston Market. We, we all know that food is pretty delicious. Shout out to Boston Market. Shout out, no, we're not shouting out because we're not going to check yet. Yet. But uh, we like Boston Market. There we do. Okay. The chicken is good. <laughs> Rotisserie. You know, the sweet potatoes, we know it's banging with the marshmallows. <laughs> and the spinach is very creamy. We okay. know that. I'm here to tell you, I know, I. it's not my top 10 of food to eat. And the reason why I say that is because I worked there. And I worked there uh, for about 30 years. Okay. Um, worked there, you know, I had a boss. I don't remember his name. He's an Indian guy whose car was two-tone gray, two, two, two gray colors, whatever the case may be. And I worked there. He would always make me work uh, extra hours. So I had seven-hour shifts. Uh, I typically work 12. Uh, he will want me cleaning the, um, the, the rotisserie machine, um, you know, making a lot of uh, vegetables. Okay. Uh, I have a lot of burn marks on my arms, so I wear <laughs> shirts because... <laughs> you had it hard, man, because, starting out. Okay. Because I burned myself on the heater. Uh, the, the thing that heats the food, yeah. I burned it on numerous occasions. Okay. Long story short, I worked there for 30 days, and... You work 12 hour a day, you expect your check to look a certain kind of way. Absolutely. Uh, when I got my check, I got about Talk three. about it. I got three of them. Uh, it, it, the checks were no longer, no bigger than $230. I couldn't fathom it. I didn't know how it worked. I didn't, didn't add up. I realized there's something, that ha- at that point, I realized there was something more to life 
than this, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, we fast forward to. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, wait, how, how, wait, how, hold on, y'all. He, he's trying to pull a fast one on you guys. So now, you know, we we understand that you had this horrible job because it. Listen, you getting burnt all over. It sounds pretty bad to me, and I'm sure it sounds pretty bad to the listeners. And you know, at that moment, you kind of felt this isn't for you, right? Now, did you feel that it wasn't for you, like, after getting burned, like, five times, four times? I'm just curious. Uh, probably five. Uh, five. Okay, okay. So, 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 so it, it took a couple of times, but eventually it did click. And when it did click, and I know you're going to probably get into this a little bit more detail. Right. But what was that defining moment? Was it like an aha moment or was it, was it a buildup? Just, just you know, uh, it was it was more of an aha, and the aha was how can I work this many hours and my check is small. <laughs> aha! That was the aha. <laughs> Something didn't add up. Okay. And, I, and at that time, you know, because as a as a consulting company where we deal with taxes, we deal with bookkeeping, we deal with the parts of every part that manages. A brand or a business, we didn't. We, I, I didn't understand taxes at that point. Okay. So I didn't realize how. I didn't know the difference between gross and net. Okay. And I didn't realize, you know, that I would net so little <laughs> to work twelve hours a day. Okay. Okay. Numbers wasn't added up. Didn't. They wasn't configuring prop. Gotcha. No, absolutely not. <laughs> and and how old were you at this at this point? I was, I was uh, seventeen. Seventeen, uh, okay. Sixteen or seventeen at the time. Okay, okay. Right. So that was my first, the second defining moment. That you know now uh, I'm a graduate. I'm a graduate from college. Right. Not graduate. I'm sorry. I was. I I, I just finished my freshman year. Okay. So Boston Market was my uh, senior year of high school. I just finished my freshman year. And now at this point, I um I work for Estee Lauder. Okay, okay, the fragrance. Yeah, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. smell good. So if you were smelling good with Estee Lauder, I was a, I was the one that was part of that process. I was what you call a line attendant. Okay. So you know you got forty bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I only gotta fill all forty of those bottles for you. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, bro. I'm like, oh, a lot of tennis. Like, okay, yeah. now we know. It sounded okay. great, right? It did, it did. Y'all yeah, like, y'all was a lot of tennis. Like, y'all <laughs> was a head tennis. <laughs> like, nah, I wasn't even that. Check, check it out, because, you know, if I, you know, when I would go to the club, you know, like, what do you do? Oh, you know, I'm a lot of I spiced it up. I mean, you know, I'm the guy that manages the line. So, you know, I say, well, they got all these burgers. I manage all those lines. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I just put the liquid in the bottle. <laughs> put the bottle in the box. I got you. Put the box on a crate <laughs> and put the crate in a room with a lot of other crates. That's all I did. It was nothing. So, so to make that sound real sexy, everybody. Right. He was a logistics man. Logistics. <laughs> I because you know, your, hey, your. right, right, right. So, so, so we we just upgraded right. that 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 second position. But, yeah. but he's, he's going to talk about the second enlightenment. Right. Of, so, of business. so I worked there for about thirty years as well. Okay. And at this time, I was a uh, because I when I went to college, I I, I was what you call a student athlete. So I played football. Okay. You know, uh, my biggest thing when I went to college was to find an uh, institution that would allow me to play football and to run a business. Okay. Because uh, I knew business was, I was either going, I either wanted to go to the NFL or or on my own company, you know, or be a, or be a part of a company that, you know, I could help grow. Right. And when I, when I did that, um, that's why I chose the institution. So I was there. Um, playing football, I had to train. You got to train as an athlete. Yeah, you want to be competitive. You want to not get knocked by, uh, knocked out by these big grown men that weigh two seventy or, or above. So, so you was a little lightweight you back then. Train. So I, no, I was, I was. Not, oh, oh, okay, you, you, was, you were solid. Yeah, I was a solid. Young okay, man, okay. You know? I was, uh, you know, five ten, uh, two hundred fifteen pounds. Mm -hmm. I ran a, a, you know, a four about a four five. Okay. Four five six to be exact. Yep. Yeah, I brought the heat, but you, you got to train. Okay. So as I was training, you know, at the time, 
I, I need to do something in the summer where I can get bread, mm-hmm. uh, make money, and then also train. Okay. Uh, so I said, let me work at SLR up until 4.30 and I can train at night. Smart. Delegate, balance out right, the time yeah. a little bit. And do, in and, and doing so, I, I start to meet all these people. So I, I met this one guy, right? One, now, now you met now you met these people on that Lord. shift. Okay, no, I said Lord on your right. shift. Okay, okay. You know the shifts. Yeah, yeah. You listen, they, I didn't even know what the different. Like I didn't know there was a shift one, shift two, shift three. Okay, I figured it out. I was on the first shift. Okay, and yeah, I come in at seven a.m. in the morning, leave at about four thirty. I started to meet people. They worked there twenty years. They worked there uh, 10 years. I know a kid I grew up with, he worked there. Mm-hmm. And he just, and I and I heard the same conversation. Okay. And the thought was they were unsatisfied. They didn't really like what they were doing. They were so comfortable in their current circumstance that they decided that's where they were going to be. And that right. was it. And then I realized that wasn't my story. Because not only was my check light, <laughs> <laughs> not only was my check light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't like what I was doing. It was okay. I, I literally, I think in the thirty years, however long I worked, there, I think it might have been between thirty to sixty days. Yes. I don't think there was a week that I worked five days because I always took one day off. I couldn't do it. it sucked. Okay. You so had to take that. Point, that had to take that personal right, day. Right. So I knew that at that point, I knew there was something more. And at that point, I met, um, I, I, you know, my sophomore year after. Uh, I pledged in a fraternity. Okay. So I'm, so I'm part of a, a very prece- a prestigious fraternity. Yep. Uh, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Okay. You know, all my brothers out there, shout you out. What's up, 06? Um, yeah, so I was part, of, you know, during a fraternity, I met a brother and introduced me to my first taste of what business was like. Okay, so, so this is, you're about how old now? Like 19? Uh, I'm about 20, 22. About 19. 19, 19, okay. 19 going to 20. All right, so so we so we had the first experience at Boston Market. Right. You got burned. And then, you know. In more ways than one. In more ways than one. And then we have, you know, going into the Estee Lauder. Right. Working logistics. Yes. You say you holler at somebody, logistics. say I do logistics, I right, right? Yeah, I wish I, I <laughs> wish you didn't that. You wish you didn't that word, right? Oh, yeah, I'm the head of the line. He's the head of the line. Okay, okay. okay. So we're just trying to follow the progress here. But so far, like, it seems as if. Those two scenarios, you, you notice that the the amount of work you was putting in, the dollars wasn't adding up after the tax. Yeah, it just wasn't. I got up. you. I got right. you. And now you're you're the a fraternity. You think about joining a fraternity now. When you joined that fraternity, did you join that fraternity from a business standpoint, as far as like networking, or did you join that fraternity? Like, what what was your reasoning behind getting into that fraternity? Just 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 out of curiosity. Well, I would say that for me. Uh, it had nothing to do with business because I didn't understand business at that point. Okay. I think it was more about, um, I, I realized like, I was growing, I, I was developed. My mom instilled a lot of strong principles. I played a strong sport and I felt I was mentally strong. Okay. I wanted to figure out something that would test all of those attributes at the same time. And that's why I decided to be a part of the turn because I felt that as a strong individual, I will be able to basically um, transition those attributes into this one thing. Okay. Uh, so, I, and not only that, when I looked at it, when I did my research, I realized there was a lot of great people that's part of this one organization. Okay. Martin Luther King, um, W. E. B. Du Bois, wow. Frederick Douglass, Thurgood, Mar- Thurgood Marshall. There's a lot of individuals that that were elements of change for not only people of color, but for people all together. Wow. And when I looked at that, I said, you know what, let me let me, let me, me give it a shot. And that's why I decided to do it. Okay. So now, and now you were just telling us about the person that you met within this group. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us a little bit about that story and how that all got you into this, this uh, business mindset so, where you are today. So when I, when I, um, you know, I uh, went through my process and, and I joined the organization. I met somebody, uh, you know, who's a real good friend of mine. I would say, give or take, for about five years or so. And 
um, basically, we were talking on the phone while we were in the process of joining the fraternity, and he's like, "Yeah, I gotta, I gotta shoot out to, um, uh, I gotta go to a business conference." And I said, "Okay, well, where are you going?" I, I, that, I never knew somebody as of underneath the age of forty, right? Talking about going to a business college, my, I was intrigued. At that that's point. that's huge, I, right? I, yeah, no, I mean that that's real, you know. Think about of, that yeah. when you nineteen, did yeah. you do you know somebody said, "Dennis, man, I'm going to a business conference." Nah, unless that was like code name for a club or something. Right, like exactly. That. Like the so, name of the club was business, <laughs> business conference. conference. Exactly. So oh, at yeah. that point, I was like, oh, oh, this is where it's at. You know, he, he knows something I don't know. So I said, bro, um, talk to me like where you going? And he said, listen, uh, once we're done, I'm gonna sit down with you, we'll talk, and go from there. So I sat down on my talk, and at the, the information he gave me, I was like, you know what, makes sense. I realized at that point. For the last 20 years of my life, I was only earning one type of income, but depending on what I did, I needed to do something different. And that's what gave me my first taste in, in stepping into business ownership. Okay. And what was the name of your first business? And it doesn't necessarily like, you know, it could have been one that you were really successful at, it could have been one that never came to fruition. Like you know, say tell us about that that first business. Was was PS Management always the name? No, nah, it wasn't the name. Yeah, give give us the good it, stuff, man. Yes, like, PS Management came at year four. Uh, year four. Uh, prior to that, I was what you what you would call a a, a legal service broker. Okay. Um, I work with uh, an organization uh, called TR Enterprises that, and basically, we we. Um, we were a group of entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, primarily, we, we basically sold what's called legal and identity theft plans, and we sold it to companies, small businesses, and individual families to help address their legal needs. And I did that for about three and a half years straight, uh, no questions or whatever. And in addition to that, the, the organization was also really involved in entertainment, so they do a lot of different events, fashion shows, a lot of parties, a lot of things that would join that like 19 year old to 24 year old crowd. Yeah. And from there, um, you know, they, they just built a really large movement. That movement uh, lasted for, well, I'm going to say it lasted. Um, I was a part of that movement, uh, I would say for about, give or take, seven years. And at that point, as you can see, the, the, the timelines are lapsing. Yeah, no, right? of course, of course. <laughs> So, but at that point, um, it's progression, you know, right? right. Like that's, that's progression, right? So at, at, so at that point, that group, you know, we did a lot of great things. We inspired a lot of people. Um, we really didn't meet because there was about thirty of us. Yeah, we really didn't meet where well, you could find thirty uh, kids un underneath the age of twenty-five that were generating a lot of good money, um, doing a lot of great parties, doing okay. having a lot of fun, right, and just enjoying what they did. You know, okay. and that, from that perspective, um, you know, that's what we did. And uh, I learned a lot of principles, some good, some bad from that from that um, experience. Well, well, if you, if you wouldn't mind sharing, give us a good principle you learned and give us one of the bad ones you learned. Okay. Good principle um, is about having a, 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 relentless, a relentless mindset, Be, basically saying that, all right, there's a lot of people out there that have dreams, goals, and desires, right? That's very true. But there's a lot of um, people that they don't know that either start the dream towards the desire or they'll quit before it even starts. Basically, my experience or the principles, you got to basically decide that you're going to do the thing until... And basically, you might have a dream, you might have an idea, whatever the idea is, you have to decide that, listen, I'm going to go to it until I see it manifest. Too many people quit before the idea manifests. And what happens is, they either try something else, they either say, you know what, I don't believe it can, it's possible anymore. Right. Or somebody else comes up with it. Okay. And they're watching that person manifest what they already thought they could manifest. So from that perspective, 
Um, that's one of the things I learned. You gotta just, whatever you believe in, you gotta just continue to work towards it until you see it happen, until, uh, unless you find a greater purpose. Okay. Um, that's the good. That's the good. What's the what's, bad? Give, give us a bad. Do anything, any means mes- necessary. Okay. Um, when growing up, I was always the type of person that, you know, I attracted people. I attracted to me people that were older than me. But I, I've been told I have an old spirit. But the thing about it is that sometimes people that are older than you don't always have the best philosophies of life because okay. they've already been through life. Right. So one of the things I would say is, um, you know, I, you know, being a part of that group, I met a, a lot of people that are older than me. They had a way of a way of going about things that I might not necessarily agree with, or might not necessarily work in the course of business as a as a really uh, uh, as a professional, right? That respects their craft and wants to be there ten years or beyond. So, from that perspective, uh, one of the things is get it done. Okay. Now, get it done is a, is the thing that you got to embody. Right. But by any means necessary, sometimes you got to want to sleep at bed at night. Okay. And that was one of the things that I learned at a later age, that some of the things that get it done brings, you might not always want to do. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's so true that any means necessary, even though that's a mantra that we hear a lot as entrepreneurs and want to be business owners, anything you got to do, get it done. But it's, um, I think that's a very important point that you brought up that there's kind of a dark side to that. And as that has grown to your progression and, you know, the years of kind of experiencing that, I would presume that that brought you to creating PS Management. Can you tell us a little bit about that story and, and what PS Management is all about? So, all right, so I'll give you the how it started. So basically, during that transition, three and a half years, getting after it, um, doing anything by any means necessary. Um, you know, we built the, as an organization, we built the following close to about 50,000. So we have about 50,000 uh, people that really uh, appreciated and supported what we did. So you're a part of something pretty big. Oh, I mean, 50,000. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's uh. Pat you on your shoulder with that one, man. Yeah, we, we had a we had a major run. Okay. Uh, about for about a two year, a two year window. Okay. We we really was on some next level, like in our eyes. I'm saying. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, in, in the in the community that we were part of, uh, we were respected. Okay. And I think that's the most important thing. So from that perspective, that 24 uh, 24 month run was was magical. It, I learned a lot. Yep. And we did a lot of amazing things. Once it crumbled, though, then it was okay. like, all right, what do you do? Right. I started to realize that um, because I believe in mentorship, you know, I, I started to be a part of everybody else's vision. Okay. For who I conceived as somebody I respected and would follow. Right. I never took into account my own vision. Okay. So 2007, <clears throat> um, I would say, no, I'm sorry, 2008 rather, uh, I got to a point where I was fed up. I said, you know what? I got to think about what's good for Mitch. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, um, I'm a very spiritual person. One time, you know, my creator, which I believe in Jesus, um, um, basically he said to me, go grab a pen. Right? So I grabbed the pen. And I started to just jot down different ideas. Those ideas uh, then turned into a business model. That business model is what we are looking at today is what's called PS Management. PS Management being a consulting and management company uh, that basically helps um, startups to businesses all around, but preferably one to five years in existence and managing their operation. Okay. So... Now, you, when you created this, you created it out of a personal want, or did you see a need? Was it because you're into mentoring? You know, to, to go to the line of business that you're in, what what drove you to that? I mean, you could have been, I don't know, like a mechanic. I mean, not that you said you mentioned working on cars, right. but what drove you into that line of business? So, basically, here's the thing. Uh, when I, uh, what happened for me, yeah. 
is that I, when I when when it was told to grab the pen, mm-hmm. I grabbed the pen for the reason of to get clarity. And in my clarity, the clarity created a, um, an alignment to what, what my purpose was. And uh, my purpose was basically put on place to empower those that are not powerful. Okay. So we think about it, right? Uh, a lot of people were, were, were in the United States. A lot of principles, a lot of things we don't truly understand. Um, because we don't understand we're disempowered to certain information that can help us to become successful and um, positive. Okay. Different things that help us to be what we need to be. Right. Right? The best, the optimal, optimal point of view. Optimize it. Right. Okay. So, being that, being that that was the case, I came to a place where I said, you know what? Um, I realized that I need to empower those that are not empowered. So, as I, you know, got the idea or the revelation to write, to write down my thoughts, you know, it brought me back to when I was a freshman in college. A freshman in college, I made a lot of bad financial decisions. Give, give us one bad, give us one bad financial decision that you would tell somebody not to do that is probably trying to be an entrepreneur thinking about being an entrepreneur or just in general because you know part of your business is informing people right. what was that bad give us one bad decision uh well one i didn't understand what credit was i thought credit was cash yeah but credit is not cash credit is just a representation of what our government sees you to be able to do being that if you show on paper, you pay your bills on time, you have good credit. Right. But if you don't, you have bad credit. Okay. See, for me, it was thought, hey, here's this credit card. If you if you run out of money, use this. <laughs> okay, I got you. So yep. that's exactly what I did. I okay. used it. I went on dates with it. <laughs> and, ha- and, and I would go to the bank and take out $20. Yep. You know, you go to oh, credit. Hey, no, I thought it was cash. <laughs> yeah, it was cash when it got to your hand. So I racked up all this credit debt. Okay. Because nobody really educated me. And when I realized that, it, like I said, I was bad at that point. I was writing down. Right. It made me realize, it made me realize that I'm in a place where I went through these experiences. Mm-hmm. Let me give the information out to where or resources yes to where the information that I learned somebody doesn't have to go through what I went through okay and that's what PS Manager started uh, again you know much respect and I hope you our listeners are enjoying the insight of really getting to know the man behind the chair you know the other host and understanding who he is as a person why he has created his business and uh, you know the story but we're not over yet I'm not done with him yet everybody so next question I got for Mr. Mitchell Backus is, is how did you go about obtaining your very first customer and what was that like for you since you have gone into transition of starting PS management so we're we talking about PS management customer or yeah we're talking about PS management customer because I know oh, wow. with, your, with your years of experience because I mean even before you started your business right you were, you were in it like you was doing it you you, you know, you had the knowledge, you had the know-how, you, you've mentored and, you know, you've been mentored and you decided you had this vision and you started your business. And I, I kind of respect that because prior to starting your business, you are a very well-informed in depth in, in the arena that you're in. But now let's get to it. Now you got a business. And we all know when you got a business, getting that first customer is not easy. So how did you go about doing that? My first cut, my first client, because I'm a big believer that customers are short term, clients are long. Um, Whoever you are out there, bitch, thanks you. I got you. <laughs> um, All right, so. Well, maybe you do you have, okay. It, oh, let me ask you a question. You've been in business for let a long ask, time. Let me ask you a question. You, wait, wait, wait. Is this it, my, you, you can't ask questions. Now, let me ask bro. you a question. Let me ask, this is my one. I get one. We're gonna let that slide, y'all. You get one. Yep. So check this out. Is it paid or not paid? 
we'll we'll let you go with Don Payne. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, right. we, we, we we could. Nah, bump that. That was too easy. We're gonna go pay. My first paid client. Yeah. Right, so my first paid client. All right. So this is the. All right. So what year is this? Yeah. All right. You've been getting paid for a long change, time, y'all. I gotta change the story. I gotta change the story. <laughs> okay. Because I don't know if the statute of limitation might incriminate me. <laughs> but basically, it's dumb. Yeah, go ahead. I met a girl. Okay. A uh, young lady. Okay. At the time, she was telling me, uh, you know, how she was looking at her taxes, but. Okay. Um, in doing so, she had a situation where, you know, she went to an institution, and that institution's fees were too, were too extensive. Okay. Um, I go ahead and I tell her, listen, you know, hey, listen, I, 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 I've done taxes before. I'm, I'm pretty aware. Right. And she came to me and said, look, oh, well, I just rock with you. I said, okay, let's do it. So um, I charged her and I helped her, I helped her in, in the preparation of the taxes. All right. Fair enough. Now. That's good. That's, that's good. That's good. All right. How? Well, I mean. Now, did you be her like a networking event? Was this like a random connection? Were you were you talking I, I, like yo? I can't is... mention the location. No, you don't give us location, I but met, give us. I met her at a public forum. There we there there. You guys hear this right, code? But okay, so <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're we're gonna skip ahead. But what what he's really saying is that you could you never know where your first client is gonna come from. You there you go. Anywhere, and um, I'm sure. Let me just ask him. I want to confirm. When you got that first payday, did you feel good? Here's what I felt. I, I definitely felt good. I felt good because it was something I earned and not what was given to me out of a systematic effort called the paycheck. All right. And what what's going on here is if we're listening of Diary of the Entrepreneur, we're talking to Mr. Mitchell J. Backus. His progression... We all know he got burned when he found out how much he was again when taxes was taken out. And it's ironic how his first client, he actually taxes. helped him with taxes. So, you know, Mitch, why don't you tell us a little bit more about some of the services that PS Management offers. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so our listeners can get more of a feel of just like your expertise and it is what you do. All right, so here's the deal. Um, when you think about our our, our company and, and our team and what we do, you just got overall think about business development, you know, or business management, if you will. You got a company, there's certain aspects that you have to account for. Even if you don't want to do it, you have to account for it. What, is, what are some of those things? So tell tell our listeners what they got to account maintain for. Maintaining accurate records. Okay. I.e. bookkeeping. Right. It's a very important part of the puzzle. A lot of entrepreneurs are not good at bookkeeping. They're pretty bad at it. And um, yeah, it's yeah, very important. Exactly. Because number one, uh, if you don't know your numbers, who does? True story. That's a, that's a bold statement. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when it, when it comes time to managing, if you, if, at the ultimate goal of a business is to become scalable. Okay. Whether you because you become scalable for a few different reasons, you either want to do an IPO, initial public offering, become a publicly traded company. Okay. You want to position yourself maybe to be acquired or to do the acquisition. Okay. Uh, you can't be you, you can't be scalable. Or you can't do that if you're not scalable. Right. Um, the other aspect of it is you want to be in position to. Um, you know, I, I said merger, uh, merger acquire. I said do the IPO. Okay. Uh, but if you want to go to a, to become scalable, you have to know your numbers. Right. You have to know where you're at. You have to know, you know, the nuances of your business from a numerical standpoint. Okay. Um, so maintaining books is very important. Right. Taxes. Taxes are one of the biggest expenses of a business. Mm-hmm. Your goal as a business owner is to pay as least amount of taxes as possible. Right. Uh, but if you don't know how, you know how how what the tax codes are in your favor. Yes. You might have um, you might have uh, be a company that has a number of different energy efficient bricks. 
if you don't know they exist, how are you going to take advantage? Okay. Strategic planning. Um, that's another area we deal with. How can you build a company if you don't know what the strategy is? And the sales process. How can you execute a plan if you're not selling it to anybody? So when you think about business development, business management, that's where we come in. That's where we effectively help our clients. You know, we've helped over 300, you know, over uh, 300 businesses and families in different uh, aspects when it comes to everything I mentioned, legal, um, emotional, whatever the case is, networking. We have different programs that assist in all of the areas. Okay. So let's just say, you know, our listeners, a lot of them are business owners or want to be business owners. And let's say they go into business and they want to, you know, maybe, maybe they want to work with PS management. Right. What would be something you would advise them to have or prepare prior to coming to you so you can better assist their business to grow? Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, wanting to work with a company such as yourself, we may not even know where we're at. How, how do we, you know, even get somewhat of a grasp to see where we're at and then probably work with, you know, a gentleman such as yourself or a company like yours? Well, two things I would really say is, um, number one, the overall thing I would say is if, if you don't know something, go get the help. Because at the end of the day, when you have a situation where you have a dream or a desire to achieve something, but it might not be in your reach, it's because there's information you're lacking. So from that perspective, you know, I know from, from certain principles, one of the principles that I abide by is you always seek, uh, you always seek advice from wise counsel. If you're lacking the counsel, you got to go figure it out. Find somebody that knows what you, what you're lacking and then get the answers. Um, so that's why that's the number one thing. You, you, if you don't have the counsel, you gotta plug into somebody that does. And for some, for for somebody that has helped over 300 businesses and families, uh, has created a networking platform that has, are connected to over 200 businesses. I'm not saying we got all the answers, right? But we got a couple. But you got you got a good you got a good few. I can give you a couple answers. Okay, exactly. I mean, so. Yeah, I mean, and you're, you're giving some some great advice. I mean, your credentials are amazing. They're through right. the roof. You you were pretty much in business before you were in business. Yeah. And you learned from your experiences, and you you know thus far have have worked with multiple you know a hundred plus clients and customers. How has your strategy been for growth? How have you? decided to grow PS management and give us some insight on what PS management may have kind of coming up in the future. Well, they kind of work one in the same, um, which I guess may answer or ask or create your next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here we go. I'm asking it, right? We don't want the cookie cutter. We want to know how is PS management able to grow their strategy right. and what might they have in plan to continue to become a juggernaut such as PS Benjamin? Well, the biggest thing is uh, it's, it's all about uh, the key word is transcendence. Okay. Um, for those that have watched the movie, we know Johnny Depp was trying to figure out a way to get his being outside of his being. So we think about PS management, um, you know, the being is 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 the business model. What do we do? We consult clients, we help them manage their stuff, right? What is the stuff? The stuff is they might need help with a service that we provide what we charge for a fee. Okay. Um, in doing so, when we're charging for a fee, there's a certain amount of man hours that goes in with that. Okay. Well, we're in the process of taking our service. Yes where our service extends exponentially how many hours it will take to provide the service. So what we're focused on, we our original model is that we provide a service, we charge a fee. Yes. Now we want to create a service that extends beyond the fee. Where the business owner can access um, 
our services, knowledge base, networking platform where they don't have to worry about, um, well, we don't have to worry about man hours to produce the finished deliverable. Okay. Finished product, if you will. So what we're doing is, uh, number one, um, we're launching a business management course, both for professionals and business owners called the Empowerment Institute. Okay. Uh, secondly, we're at, after that, we're going to be officially, um, launching our, um, cutting edge website. Okay. Uh, which will be connected to all of the social media platforms and everything that goes along with that. And that, and then lastly, um, we're going to be launching the digital form of our networking group. Wow. Which is going to be in the form of a marketplace. So those are the three things that you can look for over the next, I would say six to 12 months. Okay. Where PS management is going to transcend what they currently do. Will you be able to access us 24 mm seven -hmm. and get what you need to help grow your business by way of our network or what we do, um, what we provide personally. So, I mean, so that's pretty cool right there what you got going on. And it sounds like that what you're getting ready to do is make the information that you've gathered over the many years that you have educating yourself, that you have helped customers with, making it accessible more freely to where people can access it when they want it, when they need it, and not only access information or knowledge that you that you have learned, but also access information that you are learning. Is that is that correct so far? Hundred percent. So it, you know, so basically I guess the way you the way you preface it, it really talks about our Empowerment Institute. So with the Empowerment Institute, you know, it, it, this is going to, well, out of all the three things that I just mentioned, the Empowerment Institute is going to be our management course where you'll be able to tune into the information that we have now, the, the next day, the next month, and the next year, and all years preceding that sure. because it's a progressive realization of what we stand on found foundationally and principle wise. So tell, tell us a little bit about this empowerment course. You don't got to give us all the, the detail, but if I was to sign up or one of our listeners listening right now wanted to sign up on this empowerment course, what is it that you, you know, that, that they would get, you know, do they get a cupcake with an ice cream cake or something like, you know, the disempowerment course, like what, what am I getting in this empowerment course? What you think about it, right? Uh, when you think about, uh, just, uh, I'm going to give you an example of an NFL team, right? Yep. Every NFL team has a coach. That coach represents a certain philosophy that helps them to either crap the bed and suck okay. or, or to take their team to a, a playoff run or a championship. So you're getting our philosophy. We're becoming your coach. Okay. And for a minimum of 12 months, not saying that's how long you have to uh, be subscribed to us, but to really get the full value of what we do, um, it, the, the course, uh, you'd have to spend at least 12 months with us. Okay. Where you're getting content each week. Okay. To, to basically direct. Not just direct, give you some motivational jump out the window or run through a brick wall type stuff. We're giving you uh, actionable information mm -hmm. that you can apply okay. uh, that's going to help you to bring clarity to your life, uh, intertwine it or align it with your profession and help you to market that profession in a way that's going to help you generate dollars. Wow. So I signed up, right? So listen as you hear this, I'm, I'm going to walk through it and uh, if I miss anything, he can clarify this for us. So we signed up to the empowerment. And it sounded like we're going to get access to information on a regular basis. Access to PS management beyond just hiring, I guess, your company as, as a one-off service, you know, to do one particular job. But as our business grows and as we learn, we can kind of come to you once we're in your once we're in your course like you know you're kind of like um as you mentioned before you're into mentoring so once we're in this course we're kind of kind of grandfathered into your philosophy where we have access to learn what you're teaching 
but also be able to, uh, you know, reach out in some respect and get the mentorship for a consistent, on a consistent basis. Is, is that what we're understanding thus far? I mean, I think it pretty much sums it up. I'm just going to take out the mentor part because at the end of the day, you might be a company that has more information than us, but we just say it differently. Okay. So from that perspective, we wouldn't be mentoring you. We're just giving, we're just giving you another way to look at what you already know. So, so, all right. So then I, now I understand. So you're giving us, you're giving us the tools and the information we need to better our own business through the experience and knowledges that you have from bettering other businesses. Now we have access to that on a consistent basis, on a consistent flow. Absolutely. I and mean, you'll have access to the information and in all forms. So. You know, in addition to the the uh, weekly content that you'll be getting, it's going to give you um, information to apply towards your. Uh, um, there'll be different assignments, if you will, that will be given. Those assignments, you know, will have like documents that you'll be have access to. Have access to our Facebook private group. Um, we'll be doing different workshops, seminars, and on top of that, if we do any larger event. We receive discounts on that as well too by being subscribed to the Empowerment Institute. Okay, so if you're signed up, you know I get to learn how to do my budgeting. I get to information about my taxes. I'm gonna get strategies for my business. Um, you know everything that I would really need to to become a better business. At the end of the day, I can get that from the Empowerment Course. Yeah, and and. That, that's that's absolutely correct, and it's going to be covered in four different modules. Okay. Uh, so you think about the, that twelve month window. You think about twelve months. Typically, it's three months in a um, in, in you know, every quarter. So every um, let's say twelve weeks or so. Um, yeah, about twelve weeks or so, <laughs> you'll be getting a different module that's going to be covering number one, your business or professional strategy your financial position, your sales process, and what we like to call risk and growth assessment. Uh, so you'll be getting content geared in those four different areas, and then we'll also be giving you bonus tracks, uh, bonus um, um, sections, if you will, videos that will address areas like taxes, um, you know, some of our client-related requests, and different things like that. Nice, 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 man. And I mean, I know we've gone deep into the beginning of how Mitch got started, which was getting burned at the supermarket in Greece and stuff. So that kind of sparked it. Boston Market. Boston Market. Uh, and then, you know, we, we kind of got the area where you were in college, which was years ago, but that has developed who you are today. So on reference, how much experience would you say you have under your belt in business management and development because I know we've talked and we've covered a lot of time, but let's give people that number of how much experience you actually have. Well, you gotta look at it, right? Um, when I got first started, when I first started in my first venture, I was 19. Um, I was 19. I was, uh, I was I was single digit numbers in 2000. <laughs> okay. So we're in 2017. Yep. Um, I have over you know over a decade worth of experience when it comes to working with business owners, working with entrepreneurs, um, creating success stories. I had a young lady that I work with. I, one of the things that we do is executive coaching. Um, I did some executive coaching. The young lady had no clue what she wanted to do. Now she's a um, a, a I won't call it world renowned, but she's a very notable makeup stylist. We gave her some, some basically some structure that basically kind of gave her an idea of what she wanted to do professionally. <clears throat> she became a makeup stylist and she's done, um, she's going on tour with Little Kim. Um, she's worked with a lot of reality TV stars and she's done a lot of very, um, you know, big name. TV shows, as you might know of, that she's been a part of that set. So, 
where, you know, we have testimonies upon testimonies of people and companies that we've affected and helped and assisted. So we know we're doing good work. It's just about uh, being a part of what we're doing. Um, we're on the journey to help to to have about five, you know, 500 active clients. Um, so we're in the process of building platforms to help us to assist in that. Wow, man, 500 clients, man. I know people who only got $500. So, you know, shout out to you guys for being able to build such a massive business in the time in which you have done so. And just for the listeners out there listening, he's not just talking about, you know, those startups. I mean, he's being a little modest right now. You know, he's worked with businesses that are multi-million dollar businesses. and It's helped them to manage their books and get their business strategies in order. So even though he has access and he may be more approachable for the small businesses because he worked with the businesses, but his credentials go well beyond that. So just think about it, whether you're a big business, a small business, a medium-sized business, you'll be able to get access to PS management with their new course they're rolling out. So I think that's amazing. So before I close it off, uh, Mitch, what else do you want to leave our listeners with since you have been the guest on Diary of Entrepreneur? Well, I just want to say one thing really, and, and like I said before, because right now you listen to me and me just being a representation of, of a very um, powerful and, and dynamic team. Um, you're not, you know, there's only but so much you, you're going to really say, look, listen, let me just get involved with what you do. But I pretty much would say, start off with our course. You know, go to the Empowerment Institute, which is uh, empowerment-institute.teachable.com, where you'll be able to get a sense of what um, the program is. Subscribe to it. Very uh, cost-effective. Um, and the information that we get doesn't really value the nominal fee that you'll pay uh, on a month to month basis or say on a uh, 12 month to 12 month window. So get subscribe to our course, get involved, really understand what we're about, and then, you know, see where the relationship goes from there. All right. So we're getting ready. I guess I would say I'm getting ready to wrap the show up and I might bring back my co host because right now he was partaking as a guest. So I'm sure he's going to want to jump back on and just be the host again. Uh, you know, really thank you, and I really thank you guys for tuning into the Diary of an Entrepreneur, part of our podcast, the One Recourse Podcast, Season 2, Episode 1. And for those listeners out there, if you're thinking about joining um, his empowerment course, all I got to say is this. If you don't know your taxes or you're a business owner, you ended up losing way more money than if you were actually to be properly educated. And you can get that education by simply enrolling in the empowerment course. And that's just like one aspect, you know, just to kind of really put it out there, right there in front of you. Don't miss out on what you could know. So my name is Dennis Buchanan, founder of One Recourse, uh, pretty much main host of the show. And before I partake, I'm going to bring back my co-host, Mr. Mitchell Backus, and he can close out the show if he'd like. Well, like we do every week, we just want to thank you all for tuning in. Um, one thing I will tell you to do is that uh, we usually tell you all of our platforms. We just want to tell you to go to www.onerecourse.com forward slash podcast, and you'll be able to get everything that we're in t- uh, involved in You'll be able to see all of our previous episodes. You'll be able to subscribe to all of our platforms and be a part of what we're all about. So we thank you for tuning in. And welcome. And welcome. We we'll look forward to seeing you uh, on our next episode. Tune in and we'll see you soon.